Hello guys, welcome to Adobe Live. Uh, we have another session here with Rachel and we have a editorial week uh, schedule ahead. Uh, we're doing a lot of uh, scenes, books, lots of types, so stay tuned for all of this and welcome everybody to the chat. Hello Dana, hello Claire. Welcome back. Welcome back guys. So yeah, we have a full schedule ahead. Uh, so this week, we're, it's going to be all editorial, and we're going to have a few guests. At 9, we have uh, Rachel Rudd, uh, hosted by Javier. At 11 uh, Pacific Time, we have Stephanie, uh, hosted by Kathleen. And at 1, we have Lucas, hosted by Michael. So they're all creating awesome stuff, so stay tuned for all of this. Uh, we also have a challenge going on. And this week, we have a 90s theme editorial um, cover and, and spread it, something like that. Uh, you can take a look at the um, the challenge information on Behance.net uh, slash live. Above the chat, there's a challenge tab, so you can check out all the details. So it's a 90s theme photography scene. Uh, you can you can uh, use uh, some of the templates they have and also stock gallery, which you can just uh, use to browse through images and use them. You don't have to purchase them. So yeah, just Feel free to play with this. Again, 90s theme, and we're going to review this uh, about an hour and a half into the segment. So um, get working on this stuff and have some fun. Uh, again, thank you to everyone joining the chat. We have uh, Rachel Roth here, and do you want to give us a little intro on yourself for those that didn't watch sure. yesterday? Sure. So I am newly moved to New York City, <clears throat> and the last couple days, well, uh, graphic design and art direction are kind of my areas of expertise. Um, so the last, well, yesterday, we kind of started this typographic zine of a journal I kept, a journal of sorts, last year. And the challenge was really just to write something every day. So we're working with a lot of content and kind of making this experimental typographic little zine this week. Yep, so yeah, we're playing with a lot of type. There's, there's uh, grids, there's all kinds of stuff going on today with uh, today's segment, uh, or this segment and uh, segments later on. So uh, make sure to check that out. And also, we also we have a chat and win um, where you can uh, just start chatting and you'll win a prize today. We have a little giveaway, which is some uh, temporary tattoos uh, from Adobe <laughs> that you can just uh, sport on your arm proudly. Um, so yeah, feel, uh, that's about uh, 30 minutes into the segment, so uh, once we have fireworks and stuff like that, make sure you just start chatting and say hi, and uh, so we'll get going with this. All right. So I figured we could just kind of review where we left off yesterday. So we have the Daily Writings 365 2017, and this was kind of the cover that we're working with, and then kind of this intro spread with that prompt to write something every day in 2017, kind of the objective of this whole daily challenge. And then this kind of working table of contents of sort that kind of breaks down the year and different ways to measure a year. You're also playing around with color for yeah. seasons. Uh, yeah. Some, it's somewhat of a calendar, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I would say there's some influences of the calendar in here just as a way to measure the year and kind of mm -hmm. break it up. And it's also a very tiny scene. Um, it's four by six. Yes, so I think and somebody called it a micro zine. Yeah, micro yesterday. scene. So we have, a, we have lots of small type. And again, this is very uh, experimental. We're not really paying too much attention to rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paying attention to some of the fine details, but yep. also leaving some of them up to chance. Mm -hmm. So yesterday I kind of ended on this very full, kind of like maximalist spread. Um, and I went back last night and I kind of cheated. I tweaked it a little bit, so I thought I would show you guys just the difference there. So this is where we left off yesterday. And as you can see, I went back I decided to change the type to blue, which is the color for winter. And then, as I had in the previous spread, just kind of having these 
little excerpts pulled out and living in the gutters. And then having these three months highlighted in the background here. So that just kind of, once again, shows you just how I kind of went back and mm -hmm. cleaned that up a little bit to save some time. Are this uh, two options of the same spread or is it? Um... Well, so I, this, this spread right here will be deleted. Okay. I just wanted to show you guys the difference. All right, so this so is this the new is, spread. This is the new spread. Okay, cool. Yes. So yeah, she's using uh, colors for each season. So we're, we're playing around with blue here. Yeah. For winter, and then there'll be other colors for the other sections. Yes. Cool. So. Hello, Margarita. Hello. Another Rachel in the chat. Hello, Travis. Hey, guys. Welcome to Adobe Live. Thank you for watching. Yeah. Welcome back. Okay, so I went ahead and just deleted that first spread. That was kind of our experimental one from okay. yesterday. And this is, once again, just to kind of save time so we can keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, also, just, you know, kind of change of plans here. We had said yesterday that it was going to be 16 pages, but... Uh, that seems to be proving a little bit of mm -hmm. an issue. <laughs> so we're gonna just kind of be adaptable and roll with it. And I think it's gonna actually have to be 20 pages in the end. And mm -hmm. once again, I think this will be saddle stitched. So keeping the page count divisible by four so that we can print it in that way. Okay, yeah. Yeah, uh, we, I think we look at the, the document where she had all her writings. It was quite a bit of yeah, of copy we can that she had. show that again. <laughs> um, so she went ahead and edited before the show, or formatted the text before the show. So yeah, it's quite yeah, a bit uh, to time. fit on the scene. And again, uh, we're using a very small type. Um, it's there for people to read if they want to, but um, it's also just kind of there to create texture. Yeah, and... exactly. It's there if you want to read it, but. You don't have to if you don't want yeah. to at the same time. Heather says, I love this idea, the daily journal turn scene. Hot Peggy, shout out. <laughs> Hi Peggy. So I ended on this quote yesterday and I decided to actually put that quote up here instead. So I think I'm going to change it to this. This was inspired by a friend telling me he had done a police ride along, which I hadn't heard of. Have you heard of those? Nope. So apparently civilians can ride in the passenger seat of a police car for a shift and just kind of mm. watch and observe what happens. So one of my coworkers was telling me about it. You know, they had this like crazy story. So I wrote down that day that that would be scary. <laughs> it's something I wanted to do, but yeah, thinking back on it now, it does actually sound pretty stressful, so who knows. Has any, anyone in the audience ever done a ride along? Have any crazy <laughs> stories for us? Destiny says, this looks awesome. Loving your use of the grid. The grid yeah. is very helpful in this She's case. She's playing around with uh, type uh, uh, going uh, uh, horizontally and vertically, so experimenting. Yes. Kind of that like stream of consciousness, mm -hmm. you know, scattered thoughts. Igor from Brazil, welcome. Heather says, I did that once. I watched the cop do a lot of errands. <laughs> yeah, I feel nice. like it could be either yeah. crazy or boring yeah. or, yeah, lots of things it could be. Rasim says hi everyone. Welcome, Rasim. So I'm gonna jump into our extended type here, and I thought maybe be since it's kind of a reminder, um, maybe this for this one just kind of keeping it small, almost like a little just like post-it mm -hmm. note. Oh, and also, do you want to go over the, the three typefaces that you're yeah, using? Yeah, let's do that. Um, so yeah, to kind of review, this was our prompt yesterday. So daily writings, 2017. 
And this is our typographic zine to kind of document the writing I did last year and then kind of turn it into this tangible mm -hmm. piece. Um, and then these were just some images to provide some visuals and, you know, representation of a calendar in there and kind of how typography can live in different ways. Mm -hmm. Also this idea of one year is the earth orbiting around the sun. So kind of bringing in circles and playing with that element. Now, do you always have uh, inspiration like this? Do you always put something together before you start working? Yeah, I do. Um, I like to work with words, so I usually start with a word list, which mm -hmm. I mentioned yesterday, but I think it's also nice to kind of set a visual tone for what you want to do. So, you know, I'll go on the internet or Pinterest mm -hmm. and just kind of pull some images that kind of help me define what it is mm -hmm. I'm trying to do. Cool. Yeah. So these are our typefaces and colors that we will be using in this zine. Um, you know, sometimes it's nice to limit yourself to only using one or two typefaces, but since this zine is completely type and no image, mm -hmm. I thought it would be nice to have at least three typefaces for this to kind of give us some flexibility and a little bit more of a system to work with. Yeah, and, then, and I see you're switching it around. Some some of it is used in small titles, and then you bring it, yeah. making it bigger. Yeah, yeah. So just cool. kind of playing with that, and then uh, once again bringing in those colors, and the colors kind of represent each season. So kind of breaking mm -hmm. the year down into four, the four seasons. Awesome. And then uh, Travis was asking, do you insert the copy as one continuous? Uh, uh, into linked text boxes. I believe you have one text box and then you divide it into columns, right? Yes, so I will just make a column and just kind of paste everything in there mm -hmm. and then I just kind of add the columns and then you get your little red plus sign when you overflow your text box mm -hmm. and so I have that running into the second page. Cool. If that's what the question was. Ashton says, Sang Blue looks so nice. Ashton, what's up? <laughs> Rachel's friends popping in to the <laughs> chat. So these were just, I thought I could share some of these too. Um, these were just some things I had written down um, and pulled out that I could maybe highlight for winter. So I have some of these represented on the previous spread that you saw with all the type, um, and some of these I'll use, some of these I wouldn't, I won't, but I just thought some of them were funny. The last one, last time I was in New York, we were talking to someone on the subway, and they asked where we were from, and we told them Kansas, and he was like, oh, like KFC. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, nice. No, <laughs> that's Kentucky. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so we have, we, we were talking about Beyonce yesterday, we have yes. a, a couple other quotes like that pulled out. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, Destiny was asking, how do you go about picking your typefaces? Um, I mean, it's different for each project. Mm -hmm. I think kind of depending on what the content is and how it's laid out, what it's going to be in the end, you know, if it's something more high-end, fancy, or traditional, mm -hmm. you know, I'd probably use a serif, something that kind of matches that tone. Mm -hmm. If it's something a little more modern, then you can kind of play with maybe like a more extended or condensed mm -hmm. typeface. Um, so I don't know, I shared yesterday, and I can go over these again, some of my favorite foundries mm -hmm. and type sources. And so I, you know, I feel like if you just have a good pool mm -hmm. of typefaces to choose from. Yeah, and if you mostly share uh, uh, founders that are creating new typefaces. Yeah. Um, so we do have Colophon, Klim, um, Grilly. So yeah, uh, uh, these are all great uh, founders, but you said you also use um, classic typefaces yeah. in there, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's nice to have a mixture of both. Mm -hmm. um, and then another source that I talked about was this fonts in use. Mm -hmm. And this one's really nice too, because you can see the context of the typefaces. Mm -hmm. And that kind of also helps with you know, if you see something that looks a little more high-end or fancy, then you can kind of see what they're using yeah. there. And You can also see, like, combinations that look good together yeah. and, and, and it might inspire a, layer, a layout that you might have. Yeah. And the cool thing about fonts and use also is kind of back to what you were saying. 
I think they have a nice combination of new and old typefaces mm -hmm. represented. So you really kind of get the full spectrum here. Yeah, that's a great, it's a great mix. Sometimes you see like classic typefaces used in a way that you didn't think about yeah, before. And yeah, you're like, wow, yeah, kind of cool. like repurposed yeah. classic typefaces. And then you can even, let's see if we type in classic. So yeah, you can also search specifically and edit, you know, filter it, filter your search that way. So yeah, mm -hmm. that is a great source to have. Yeah, that's a great inspirational site. Hello, Colby. Hello, guys. Welcome to the chat. Carson says, watching you work makes me want to make something too. Do it. Yeah. Go yeah. for it. Yeah, there's also, um, we have a challenge going on, so if you're inspired, uh, make sure you go to Behance net slash live and we have a little challenge tab above the chat and you can look at all the um, instructions uh, there's a template it's a 90s theme so yeah you can um, think of going back to the 90s um, yeah. say by the bell and oh, <laughs> that yeah. kind of stuff so show us all that grunge too yeah. 90s grunge oh yeah so have some fun with that and they win a free year of Oh yeah, Creative if you, um, on the challenge, uh, we'll review the challenge uh, entries and then uh, the winner will get a full year subscription to uh, the Creative Cloud. So that's pretty good. Make sure to check it out. This blue color Hello, is. Shani. Ismael. Mic check, mic check. <laughs> Colleen says, love your earrings, <laughs> Richie. Is that what they call you? <laughs> yeah, it, it's a nickname. Okay. Thanks, Colleen. <laughs> Colleen gave me the earrings. <laughs> uh, let's see, wait, okay, so maybe it's just something really simple like that. Do you always leave uh, your grid turned on like that, or do you also work without it? Um, I think for the most part, I leave it on. Um, cool. Yeah, I would say so. Um, I've also gone ahead and put all of my colors into this folder here. Mm -hmm. That kind of. I don't know. I like to keep things organ as organized in the file as possible. And then That's once nice. again, these colors are in RGB right now, which isn't really appropriate for a printed piece, but I just figured it would represent the colors I'm mm -hmm. trying to pick the best for right now. But if I when when you would take this to a printer, you would actually pick the Pantone swatches that match these colors. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Do you ever use uh, layers on InDesign? Um, I'm not a huge fan of layers personally, but when I get into the print production side of things, I will. Mm -hmm. So if there's a die cut um, mm -hmm. or you know any sort of process, you know I'll put that on a layer cool. and label the layer like "Do not print." This mm -hmm. is deboss. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, <sighs> Re Remy is asking. Um, is there any rhyme or reason to the determining uh, your margins? Um, so the margins that I chose for this, so usually it defaults on 0.5 inches, and I went ahead and did 0.25 because the piece is smaller, and so I kind of need as much mm -hmm. working space as I can get. And then on the inside, I've used 0.5 margins because I'm thinking I'll go back in the end and maybe add some page numbers. Mm -hmm in that area. Okay. So that was kind of why I picked. And you're also using a four by six page size? Correct. Which is an in inches, so your yeah. margins are in inches because yeah. of that? Yeah. Using inches since we are in the US. Cool. <clears throat> Hello from Morocco, Mohammed. Welcome.
Colby's asking, when you show editorial illustrations in your portfolio, do you use mockups or just pages? I'm not sure if I... Um, if I am understanding the question correctly, I have been lucky enough to be able to print everything that's in my portfolio and actually photograph it. So I think that if you can do that, that's definitely yeah. the best way to show it. I just think it, you know, especially if there's something tactile and printed, mm -hmm. it's nice to kind of get some of those textures and real dimensions and shots. Yeah, I agree. I think mock-ups are a, a great source if yeah. you don't have the, you know, the budget or the facility to photograph um, your projects. But yeah, photography, if you can do it, it's always a plus for, for me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Did you shoot any of your own um, portfolio pieces? Some here and there, okay. yeah. Um, at the previous studio I w worked for, Design Ranch, um, we actually got to work with a photographer of course. to shoot some of our stuff in the studio. So we had controlled lighting mm -hmm. and, you know. Yeah, it's harder when you're a freelancer and you kind of, you know. Yeah. Or if you know a friend that's a photographer, right. sometimes they can help you out. Those are great friends to have. Yeah. <laughs> so this is kind of where the spread is going, I would say. Um, since we just kind of had this really layered, chaotic spread, I thought it would be nice to have something that's maybe a little more clean. Mm -hmm. um, and then once again, I kind of like this idea, since this is like a reminder um, to maybe just have it be kind of small and you know, almost like something you would write on yeah. a post-it note. And then this is just like another little thought. Okay, a little pull quote. I think we all have those nights where we just snack until it's... ate a dinner of snacks. Snack nice. until you're full. I've done that quite a few times. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes snacks are better than <laughs> a meal. Remy says, love the chaotic spread. Nice. Yeah, gotta have some contrast to the simple spreads. Raul says, Viva la InDesign. <laughs> yeah, InDesign is cool. I like using InDesign. Yeah, I think InDesign's my favorite. We were having conversations about um, Quark Express. If anybody ever used Quark Express, <laughs> what a nightmare that was. <laughs> and how, how grateful I was when InDesign came out. I don't have any <laughs> formal Quark experience. Yeah, I'm kind of dating I've, myself here. <laughs> I've heard a lot about it. <laughs> Do we have some Quark users? Yeah, yeah. Heidi says out there. Quark. Uh -huh. Has anybody ever used Quark in the chat? I hope not. <laughs> Page maker, yeah, that's that one was another one too. I don't know if I've heard of this. Yeah, we have a few Page Maker and Quark Express users. <laughs> yeah, Quark was awful. Yep. <laughs> I agree with that. Ryan learned it in school. I did too. And Quark was only for layouts, is that right? Yeah, it's pretty it was pretty much uh, in design in a complex, unnecessary way. Yeah. So I'm just kind of going through and really tweaking some of this type. Um, sometimes I'll go in and just <laughs> kern the exact space between each letter. Mm -hmm. Do you ever uh, use baseline? Grid and that kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah, here and there. Just once again, kind of yeah. depending on the nature of the project. Um, and then even though we have a complex grid on this spread, I'm creating my own guides so that these right. are just aligning perfectly, yeah. Because we like things aligning. <laughs> yes, we do. Sometimes you have to go and just kind of cheat things. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's still conversations about Quark that people are agreeing to in design. 
saved by a design. Freehand, yeah, that was another one. Carson says, all the Thai faces are so sexy. <laughs> Love a good looking typeface. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just adding some black to the background here to kind of provide some contrast on the spread. And then once again, kind of using this circle as an idea of the sun and mm -hmm. the earth orbiting around the sun. Mm -hmm. Cool. We'll go back and maybe add some little type there. Mm -hmm. okay. Awesome. Yeah, guys, um, again, check out the challenge. It's uh, back to the 90s theme. A little tab on behance.net slash light. A little tab above the chat. Check it out. Uh, we'll review them and there's a one year subscription to Creative Cloud uh, giveaway for the winner. So check it out and participate. And there'll be more challenges uh, throughout the day. We have a full schedule, um, all editorial designers. So yeah, make sure to check it out. Favorite font? We've discussed this. Um, I don't think there's a. Yeah. One. yeah, I think it it changes a lot. Yeah. Do you have a favorite one right now? Um, no, not on the top of my head. I've been experimenting a lot with newer typefaces and okay. some of the same founders that you've been nice. showing at. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it's fun to always try to work with some new typefaces. Mm -hmm. I do have a preference for sans serif, yeah. mostly. I definitely feel that. Um, so here, what I'm doing is grabbing these three elements and using the align uh, table over here to just make sure that those are perfectly spaced. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you can use this tool, other times you just have to make a box and kind of manually measure the space mm -hmm. yourself. And sometimes you can cheat a little bit because visually it might not align, but. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, sometimes the mathematics don't necessarily look the best. Or the mathematical. Adriano says, oh, I miss working in, within design. Do it. Yeah. Go back to the it. The challenge today. Yeah. Yeah, I think you, it's always fun to make out uh, a project on your own, like this one for yourself. You just kind of were playing around your downtime, and now yeah. you're turning it into something. So yeah, I would highly encourage everyone watching to just create something. If you haven't worked in InDesign, just grab it and create a little scene or something for fun. Do it. Okay, so I'm once again just playing with the layout and how I want to display this date. So I think I'm just gonna... Oh. Chris says, hello from Honduras. Wow. International. Welcome, welcome to the chat. All right, so moving on to spring now. All right, we got some pink. Once again, we might, you know, I'm kind of leaving things as they are right now, but mm -hmm. might go back and kind of fine tune some things tomorrow, maybe add some layers to it. Cool, we'll yeah, we got 20 pages to fill, so. Yeah, and lots of content. Mm -hmm. So let's just kind of. Corinne. I said that right. Hello from France. Welcome. So yeah, we have a little um, chat and win situation going on. We got fireworks. It's going to get crazy. Start chatting. Uh, there's a little giveaway. So hello, guys. Welcome to the chat. Um, 
Some it's just a, tattoos. Yeah, it's going to be here. drawn by the computer, I believe. So all those who are chatting. So we'll have a little intro video for that. Yep, fireworks. Ooh. <laughs> it's a start, celebration. Start chatting. We have a little tattoo giveaway for all the Adobe fans. If you want to have a toolbar on your arm, start chatting now. <laughs> Some temporary tattoos for you guys. Welcome everybody to the chat. And Nell says, pick me. Um, <laughs> Yadira says, design. <laughs> Tattoos, yeah. Living Welcome and walking everyone. in design toolbars. Yeah. Welcome everybody to the <laughs> chat. Yeah, we have a uh, editorial week, so we're working with Rachel creating a scene, and we have two more segments uh, coming later on. Um, all editorial designs, so check it out. Hashtag Ink Life. Yeah. So we have a winner. <laughs> The winner is Renata Sassi. Congratulations, you have a little giveaway here. If we can switch to the GoPro, you get a little set of tattoos to sport on your arm, Photoshop, Illustrator, Dreamweaver, and the last one is, is it InDesign? It's backwards, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and you get a little toolbar. So Very congratulations, cool. Renata. Team will be in touch with you. Stay on the chat. So once again, we've got all of this type placed in here and a little bit of overflow for spring. Mm -hmm. um, Switching out the grid a little bit on this Yeah, so on the last really text heavy page, we had the type flipped or rotated. Um, Horizontally? So yeah, horizontally. So I think on this one... And you had seven columns, right? You were working with seven? Yeah, cool. yeah. So on the last one, we had seven columns, which was kind of a nod to the seven days of the week and kind of how a calendar, a traditional calendar, is divided into seven columns. So kind cool. of mimicking that. Um, and then kind of keeping it a little bit we cleaner. Three. Yeah. And then you on the next one, you mix... Um, is it five and yeah. three? So this is five. Um, you want to show your grid so people can see how you're breaking it Yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to keep playing around with this. I don't know that this is the final layout, so I'm just going to kind of So it's all experiment. fitting to the grid you have in the background, right? Exactly, so, yeah. So yeah, you can always switch it up, use three columns and five, and depending on how you build your grid and how many columns you have, you can always mix it up. Right. Um, so I, I'm just gonna kind of mess around with how this could lay out. Why is this <laughs> Muhammad said, what? <laughs> Thought I won. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Muhammad. Yeah, I think it's all done by the computer. <laughs> Computers are smarter than us. They are. So this is kind of a weird way of doing this. It's something that you probably wouldn't do for a client, mm -hmm. but uh, We're experimenting. once again, just kind of, yeah, playing with type in the grid and using tricks we haven't so used before. So you got text going at different? So I've got two chunks. Cool. Type here. You're just going in a, in a different got, direction. Yeah, it's like cool. going this way. So, also kind of that idea that if someone were to read this, you know, they're kind of mm -hmm. turning the book and having to look at it in different ways, which I think is kind of interesting. And then yep. keeping all the gutters. I think that's one thing I'll keep consistent throughout all of this is always having that 0.125 gutter. So, just having mm -hmm. a level of consistency. Raul says, but not more creative, I guess. 
computers being smart. Uh, I don't know. Some, uh, <laughs> yeah. We were looking at some, uh, one cool. of the other segments, uh, one of the, yeah. the guys, Lucas, was creating some crazy stuff with really crazy scripts. Stuff. So, know, maybe one day they'll be more creative than us. Mohammed says, do you make grid and guides according to the content of your page size? Um, yeah, I mean, I usually align my grid to the margin. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, I mean, I think it's nice, if anything, to give yourself more columns than less because mm -hmm. you can always, I mean, you don't have to use every column. You know, you can have a column yeah. spread across a couple on the grid if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, um, totally. So I think it's, you know, sometimes it's better to have more than less to kind of give yourself some flexibility. But yeah. sometimes it's nice to have the restraint of... Yeah, I think if you want to get really technical and uh, align all your type, you know, to point sizes and pikas and all that, mm -hmm. it might make sense to uh, pick a grid that fits within the uh, unit system you're using, so yeah. That that's more for like technical editorial work, I guess. Yeah. Um, we're having experimenting a little bit here, so having a little bit of flexibility on all that is uh, is helpful. <laughs> Bye, Chris. I think she has to go. Um, to school finals. Good luck. Yeah. That means it's probably almost summertime. Hi, Teresa. She says, looking nice. Thank you. Uh, somebody, uh, Travis is asking, uh, when it's time to publish, do you work with print houses yourself? If so, uh, are there any tips uh, for the handoff? You export a PDF, package the InDesign? Or? Um, yeah, so the experience that I have with printing was, like I said, through the studio, mostly through the studio that I worked for previously, Design Ranch. And we have a couple printers that we have developed relationship, relationships with, um, which is nice because then they kind of understand you know, your like standard of print mm -hmm. and, you know, can kind of work with you on those meticulous details. But typically for print production, and I'm hoping to kind of show a little bit of that tomorrow if mm -hmm. I can, um, but just kind of going through and making sure everything is very, very clean in the file, things are lined up, taking, taking out anything that's, you know, on the side of your pages mm -hmm. or any swatches you're not using. And then I always package the file before sending it. Yeah. Or at least is cool. how, how I've done it. Yeah, so do did you deliver an InDesign file? Um, and you make sure you, that you're using all the correct spot colors if you're using any, or if you're using uh, CMYK, and make sure you're, all your yep. um, swatches are correct. Yeah, and photos so, for that matter mm -hmm. too, if you have photos. Yeah, and you can also use uh, um, Acrobat to kind of double check some of those specs. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I think it, it also depends on, on where you work at and the, the size of the studio. Mm -hmm. uh, I've normally worked with um, a, a production designer. Oh, that's nice. That was really technical and would kind of give you all the guidance you needed. And I learned a lot from him. Um, yeah, so it's always nice to have somebody to teach you all this stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a lot. Printers, to printers, printers do get mad a lot when you send them a messy file. Yeah, yeah. And there's just less room for error, I think, yeah. if you have it just very buttoned yeah. up and. Yeah. It's a lot of work to prepare a file. Like you have it to is. double check it everything. It is. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Even printing it too. I mean, going yeah. on press and, you know, if you run into any hiccups. Mm -hmm while you're on press, that's a whole nother thing. Yeah, so if you can be on top of all your details while you're working on stuff, like make sure you have 
and the correct swatch assigned to it and all that. And, like you're a little bit ahead, but you know, mm -hmm. it's a lot of work. And a lot of what I've done in the past as well is I'll meet with the printer throughout and I'll type up very specific print specs and then just kind of talk through it mm -hmm. with the printer. Sometimes showing examples and just yeah. making sure they have a clear idea of what it is. Yeah, if you're, you're using trying to uh, more complex printing methods and stuff, yeah. It always helps to have printed materials of hand to mm -hmm. show. I agree. Yep. Um, Remy is asking if you have a preference between full justification or rag lines. I think we went over this yesterday. Yeah. Um, um, for this yeah. for this purpose, I think we're using justified, and we also had a conversation over hyphens. Oh yeah, uh, lots of hyphen since, talk. Since we have a really tiny text in tiny space, uh, the hyphens help with the little rivers uh, that happen on the copy. So, uh, do you have a preference for justified versus ragged? I don't. I like both. I think both can be cool and appropriate. Um, but yeah, it just kind of depends on mm -hmm. the nature. Like for this, because there's so much type, mm -hmm. um, for the body copy, I am justifying it just to kind of maintain a sense of structure. Yeah, um, yeah. and then, yeah, I mean. Yeah, if you the, have shorter copy, you know, you can always go and like edit yeah. manually yeah. Your, your rag lines. Um, yeah, so if I was pulling out just one paragraph and it was like, you know, 12 point type, mm -hmm. I would probably go through and manually hyphen it or make sure it wasn't hyphenated. Mm -hmm. So this was um, some type that I had used for a quote yesterday and I changed the quote and applied it to this one. So working with that as a pulled quote in our spring section. Cool. And then kind of, once again, playing with column widths, keeping it kinetic mm -hmm. and dynamic, um, and then bringing in that spring color, this time as a background. Okay. Yeah, there's a conversation going on about packaging your files. Yeah, you should package them so you have all the fonts. Um, in one folder, all the images in one folder. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also do this manually, but InDesign has an option to package your file. And as long as everything is linked correctly, everything should be packaged into the file. <laughs> yeah, Adobe, Adobe Typekit is pretty cool, too. For those who are experimenting with that, they're constantly adding new typefaces, and it's a great source to have um, while you're working on Adobe uh, software. Minbill is asking, is there a cheat sheet or a tutorial to learn how to use paragraph or character styles? I'm sure there's a ton of tutorials oh, yeah. out there. Just I think there's a tutorial for, for just yeah. about everything. Um, so something else I just did here, um, anytime you have a pulled quote or your centering type that has punctuation at the end, there's this nice little story trick over here. Mm -hmm. Um, and so what that does is that just optically aligns your type because the period will kind of offset how centered the type mm -hmm. is. And so when you click this, um, it just optically kind of shifts that type mm -hmm. so that it doesn't, so that it's actually centered. Cool. Yeah, that's a nice little feature. And then it shifted this. I don't know if I like that. Aligning stuff. Remy 
he's asking, are there any good resources to swear by for color choices aside from Adobe Color? Um, I would say just go through images you like or books that you like and kind of build swatch, uh, swatches from there. So you can add them to your library and like use them constantly, switch them around. But I don't have one particular source, do you? Um, I don't think so. Just kind of, yeah, agree with what you were saying. Okay. There's conversations going on about client calling to change the design. <laughs> yeah, we love those. <laughs> yeah, we love those. Clients. Are always fun. We love clients directing us as designers. It's the best thing. Yeah, they're better <laughs> designers than us, right? <laughs> yeah, I love it when clients uh, design things for you, and like, and then you're <laughs> like, okay, why, why did you hire me? Yes. That definitely happens. Somebody's saying coolers.co. C O O L O R S. That's a source for color. Yeah. Or color that adobe.com. I've never Check used that out. one. Yeah. Well, the actually kind of curious. Let's see. Color. Color that adobe.com. Let's check it out. Okay, yeah. I remember learning this in school. So I think this, if you pick, you could do like complementary colors, mm -hmm. and then it will go produce a uh, color palette for you, depending on where you are on the color wheel. Mm -hmm. It's kind of nice. Yeah. Again, computers doing things for us. It's yep. great. Yeah, sometimes these creative. tools are, are great because they, they'll give you combinations you, you you couldn't think of from the top of your head. And, mm -hmm. you know, you can always use this. Sometimes, too, when I'm picking colors, if I'm using something like this, maybe I'll just screenshot a bunch of different ones that I like and then kind of piece mm -hmm. one together. Um, I usually keep an ongoing just file or Pinterest board or folder of colors that I'll see as I'm looking through yeah. things. So that gives you a nice pool to pick from. But colors can be tricky. Mm -hmm. Sarah's asking where you start your basic layout designs, sketching them out versus digital wireframing, or do you just tend to play as you go? Yeah, I think we... Yeah, for this, we're kind of playing as we go a little bit more. Um, and that's kind of how I generally like to start a layout, is just putting the elements on the page mm -hmm. and kind of moving them around, duplicating the page, and then moving something else around, and then you kind of mm -hmm. click back and forth and can kind of... You know, yeah, I think much. it's it's good to experiment at first uh, before you kind of lock into one particular grid. Um, you can play around with different grids, and then once you have something you kind of liking, then you just use that grid throughout. But yeah, I agree. Starting a blank document, you can sketch it. I don't mm -hmm. think there are any rules to yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, I think it's whatever works best for your mm -hmm. process. I, I personally like to sketch, even if it's just like little quick thumbnails. Mm -hmm. um, some people just jump directly into the computer and that's good too. Yeah, I think, especially when doing editorial design, um, you know, it's nice to kind of pull back and look at everything at once mm -hmm. to determine your pacing. So sometimes that could be just after you've gone through and kind of solidified a few spreads, maybe you print them all out and lay them on the ground and mm -hmm. then it's kind of like, okay, you know, this, you know, more minimal page should go here followed by maybe something that's a little bit more full and yeah. type heavy mm -hmm. or 
you know, having, just kind of creating a nice balance. Yep, so we're playing with just uh, type here. Uh, for those who j join later, um, Rachel is creating a little scene out of thoughts she wrote uh, over the course of a year. Um, so now she's arranging it in, in a really tiny scene, four by six, uh, very heavy on the copy, and we're just experimenting, creating stuff. Um, I believe it's a 20 page document. Yes. That we're gonna be working towards. Yeah, and kind of as as we're working through it, the document will be longer than 20 mm -hmm. pages just because I'm kind of duplicating things and rearranging things as we go. Yeah, and we don't have any photography, so she's just playing around with um, typography, and she has three typefaces that she's playing around with, um, and she's switching them around with titles and stuff like that, so yeah. Also, for those who are just joining, we have a challenge going on on the behance.net uh, slash live site. Above the chat, there's a little challenge tab with all the instructions. There's a template to use, there's a stock gallery, and the theme is back to the 90s. So go check it out. Um, it's a photography scene. So maybe like a cover and one spread or something like that, or just one spread. Um, have some fun with that. We still have 37 minutes to submit your challenge, so have some fun with that. Yeah, show us some of your favorite 90s. Yeah. 90s bands. Yeah. And for those who were saying you miss using InDesign, well, this is a great chance to Open it again and play around with it. Yeah, there's no, um, the typefaces just have some fun with it. Make sure it kind of cues to the 90s. Uh, Rachel was mentioning that grunge era and those <laughs> uh, funky grunge fonts that oh, yeah. were heavily used back in the days. Um, Lots of 90s. Yeah, 90s. Textures. Yeah. Yeah, I believe uh, Saved by the Bell, was that 80s or 90s? Early 90s, it, maybe? Yeah, I feel like maybe early 90s. Yeah. Yeah, the little poster we have kind of reminds me of Saved by yeah, the Bell. Yeah, I could see that. So, yeah, guys, have some fun. Check out the challenge tab. I saw it saying, nice idea. Seems like it would work for web design too. Yeah. That rave flyers. I like that idea. Okay. Electronic music. Yeah, I guess it was, it was a good era for electronic music as well. Rave flyers, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I forget, if you don't make it on this uh, deadline, which is 35 minutes ahead, uh, you can still submit it to the next segment. We have a full week of editorial design uh, segments, um, so make sure you check it out. Um, there's more at 11, and you can still submit your challenge on that segment, so check it out. Stay tuned. Lots of scenes, type, grids, if you like all of that, stay tuned on Adobe Live. <laughs> Fonts in use is helpful. You can search for 90s. There you go. Yeah. I'm sure you can search for 90s also on Typekit. Some you're just adding details. Yeah, so just kind of going through and kind of trying to nail some things down. What are, what are you doing? Um, so here, I'm kind of trying to figure out a way to mark 
the end oh, of okay. each season. Um, so just kind of, you know, over here, it's a little dash for the end of spring. Okay. So maybe keeping, maybe that's a consistent element. Yeah, that's fun. That I keep. <laughs> yeah, there's talks of uh, the World Cup going on on the chat. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's been intense. Today was too intense. <laughs> Did you get the outcome that you were hoping for? I think so. We were <laughs> feeling good. Matthias says Sweden. Yep. <laughs> they did good. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of take a break from trying to figure out this spread because mm -hmm. I don't really feel like it's where I want it to be just quite yet. So I'm gonna try to not look at it for a little bit and yeah. then come back to it. So, so far you have two seasons sort of uh, laid out? Yeah, yeah. Oh. So as I'm going through things too and kind of trying to figure out the design, I like to kind of do a preview of what mm -hmm. I have so far and kind of remind myself what I'm trying to do and kind of what the tone is. Um, so yeah, kind of having these graphic heavy intro spreads and then having the really type heavy spreads kind of sprinkled mm -hmm. in there. And you're breaking it up with full color on some pages yeah, and stuff yeah. like that to help with the pacing. Yeah, so bringing in color to kind of, yeah, like you said, pacing. Mm -hmm. Switching the grid around a little bit. Switching the grid around. You have text going in, in, in one direction and yeah. another direction. So yeah, experimenting. Again, we're doing, a, or Rachel's doing a, a more experimental scene with really tiny copy. But then keeping some things consistent as well, like our margins, margins here yeah. and then having the gutters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just uh, playing around still within the grid, so it all kind of matches. Okay. So this is the end of spring. Sarah was asking, do you utilize the fairly new publish online feature? I love it. That would be handy for a scene, yeah. I'm actually not familiar with that. Do you know what that is? Yeah, I think uh, also um, for the challenge, that's kind of how you submit your your um, design, I believe. So yeah, it creates like a little URL or something like that. For okay. That. Very cool. Yeah. I was not aware of that. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I haven't used it much either. So once again. So how are we feeling? Are we, do we have enough change in the layout? Um, so do you feel like you need to add something else? Yeah, so like I said, I'm I'm feeling pretty good about most of it, except the spread still feels not does right to me. Does it feel too similar to the other spread, or what is it? Yeah, I think a little bit of that, trying to make it different than this. Cool. Um, but also kind of, yeah, I want it to feel a little bit reflective of the season as well. So like I said, winter was, I feel like winter was kind of chaotic last year. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of things that happened with inauguration, Women's March, and then I had done some traveling. So that's, I kind of liked the idea that this spread could be a little bit mm -hmm. more chaotic. Do um, you feel like uh, like you want to use uh, completely different layouts for, for, for most of this? Or... Um, it's an, if it's like, if you know, you're experimenting with this, but if it's like a more traditional editorial piece, like, uh -huh. it's, you know, there's nothing wrong with like repeating a layout. Yeah, but, yeah, um, yeah, I agree. In this case, do you want to bury it like throughout or? Um, 
I'm not sure I understand what you're asking. <laughs> like just bearing the the layouts, like if you repeat oh, a oh, similar okay, okay, layout. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was thinking <laughs> since this is the second season, getting through this one first, and then okay. maybe summer or fall we'll use the winter layout, but oh, maybe just like reversed or something. Cool. Is that what you were asking? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm just yeah, just asking if you were okay with repeating. Yeah, the yeah. I mean, or if you want to just switch it. On. Yeah. Usually, if it was for a client, you would establish. Yeah, like for more traditional yeah, editorial, yeah. you you might have to go back to. Yeah, you probably layout. have like four spreads maybe right. that you kind of use as a template. It's kind of hard sometimes too working with these layered pieces and trying to find mm -hmm. where they all are. Somebody's saying the cover with a black square over the text is nice. Oh. Yeah, it's a little nice little trick. And Carson is so stoked on design live stream is a thing. Cool. Thanks for joining us, Carson. Okay, so. Ismael is saying, not feeling the freaky big spring. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I am either. Awesome. Ismael is not that much into UI and UX. He says, God bless Rachel. There's more, <laughs> there's more editorial design coming up and, and, and Adobe is switching it around all the time. There's illustration weeks, there's um, you know, branding. So yeah, keep coming back. Um, there's great stuff being created for everybody. Yes. Some computer generated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this week is all editorial, so yeah, you are in for a treat, Ismael. Twenty six minutes to share your challenge. Hit the challenge tab uh, on the Behance side above the chat. Check out all the instructions, and there's also another segment coming in after this one, so you can still submit your design there. So back to the 90s theme, so have some fun with that. Did you have, who are your favorite 90s, 90s bands? Oh, Nirvana. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Nirvana, I'm still a big fan of Nirvana. Nice. How about you? Well, I was probably too young to appreciate Nirvana in the 90s. My very first concert never, ever. Never too young. <laughs> yeah. I didn't have any older siblings to introduce me to that kind of stuff, so I was on the Spice Girls Backstreet Boys mm -hmm. kick. Spice Girls was actually my first concert ever. <laughs> nice. So. Here in the U.S.? Yep. That's yep. awesome. In Kansas. Yeah, the Spice Girls were big in the 90s. Oh, yeah. That could influence the challenge, a challenge submission, maybe. Ooh. Just Very throwing, well out, throwing out ideas. <laughs> Somebody's saying Alice in Chains. <laughs> there we go. There's a conversation going on about the publishing um, link on InDesign. So people are saying the URL is not visible by Google. I guess it's like sort of private, so that's nice. Hmm. Carson's saying Beast, uh, NSYNC, and Matthias oh, yeah. says Beastie Boys. Yeah, yeah. Bring those into also good ones. <laughs> Pearl Jam.
so so I'm feeling better about mm -hmm. this spread um, but yeah I'm just gonna kind of keep moving forward yeah. and then come back to some of this yeah it's always nice if you're feeling like you're getting stuck on something to just leave it and then continue working on other yeah. stuff maybe even switch projects yeah and then you can always come back and, and continue but we have to stick to this project now so sometimes it's good to to just get off the computer for right. a little bit if I'm feeling stuck like that. Mm -hmm. So these were some words that I had written down that felt summary to me. So we have gingham, cicadas, bike rides, ice cream, thunderstorms, and lake. And these are words that ins that uh, inspired you to create this, or words that were, or something that was happening. Uh, you were uh, they were, these were just words that I had written. I noticed these words recurring in a lot of my entries okay. over last summer. So I thought it could be kind of a nice introduction to the season to just kind of highlight okay. these words that really emulate summertime. Thunderstorms. Yeah, Kansas City has some crazy thunderstorms. Okay. Yeah. So, and I lived on the almost top floor of my apartment, and I swear it would just like so rumble the building. Most of this uh, thoughts and writings are uh, happening around Kansas yes. City? Yes, yeah. Yeah, this year, the year that traveling. I wrote these, I was living in Kansas City, but yeah, traveling cool. as much as I could. Clay says, Pet Shop Boys, West End Girls. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. George Michael. Nine, Nine Inch Nails, that's a good one. I guess The Cure, it's kind of a 80s band, but it also was super popular in the 90s. I would have to say The Cure is another band that I like. <laughs> Matthias is saying, Adobe Live, you were born in the 90s. Yeah, I guess that's accurate. <laughs> and Tim is saying Macarena. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. That makes me think of Ooh. roller skating rinks. Aphex Twin, yep. And Portis hat. Yeah. Yep. Great so electronic stuff. Oh, this is cool. I also kind of like that when you zoom in. So maybe You repeated the the same Yeah, so I just oh took this type and use the paragraphs styling to kind of align it to different edges mm -hmm. of the text box. So you have center, line left, line right. Yeah. Cool. And then just kind of giving it a nice 45 degree. Yeah, it's nice how it all kind of blends in and creates rotation. The typographic texture. And so then it's like if I want these to align here, or maybe these should just be, you know, more like that. Mm -hmm. It's a little more staggered. Uh, Bruno's asking, Rachel, would you print this project in CMYK or Pantone? Are you thinking about that as you plan your pages? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, I mean, in a perfect world, I would probably print it with Pantones, mm -hmm. just because they're nice. You know, you get a richer color and you have more options that way, I think. Whereas digital or CMYK, um, it's hard to get those really bright, mm -hmm. rich right colors, colors yeah. sometimes. Um, yeah, I mean, if you were really going all out too, you could 
throw some neon in there mm -hmm. or something that you wouldn't be able to produce with a digital printer. No. Yeah, this font is kind of weird in all caps too, but I think I like it. Yeah. Like that H feels kind of weird to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it somehow feels like when I'm looking at this, it feels like the type is cut yeah. or cropped for some reason. Yeah, there's some the, weird... Because the, 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 the thins are super thin, so it kind of gets lost, but yeah. it creates this like nice uh, look to it. So now that I'm feeling... Like I'm kind of liking where this is going. Mm -hmm. I might duplicate this page. So you're keeping one as is, and then you're gonna experiment more. Yeah. You do that a lot to go back and... I do do that a lot. Um, it helps me, and then I can kind of preview it like this mm -hmm. and flip back and forth, and that's just a quick, easy way to yeah. compare. You know, sometimes people print it out, and you can do that as well, but, you know, this is just like a quick... Yeah, I do that a lot, little... too. I duplicate things too much and <laughs> yeah. like, always, like, um, afraid that I might lose something that I did before. Yeah. So I always duplicating things, and then in the end, I just feel like I duplicate too much. Right. But, yeah, and then you kind of go down a rabbit hole, duplicating, <laughs> and then next thing you know, and you have too like, many Which options. One is the good one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that happens. Yeah. That's when it's nice to get a third party involved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just kind of get a second opinion sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's part of the exploration uh, process. Yeah. Fanny Esquivel is saying, a Mexican rock in the 90s, Café Tacuba, Jaguares, Molotov, Caifanes. <laughs> Spice Girls versus Grids and Guides, says Mohammed. Getting a shout out from Caleb. Hi, Caleb. Caleb. <clears throat> really strong and dynamic the... layouts. Um, so I think what I'm, so this is kind of the first spread where I would have spring and summer together. Mm -hmm. So I think it might be nice to have a little bit of that so it's not so rigid divided. Mm -hmm. um, but if that's the case, I will need to put the spring over here. And I am aligning these to the center of the actual page and not the margin. Mm -hmm. But um, if this were like a perfect bound book or, you know, some a book or an instance where you would lose some of the layout into the gutter, that's when I would mm -hmm. kind of have a larger margin here and kind of yeah. push things out to the edge to avoid. Yeah, but you still in. have enough uh, room around the tie, so you're not so worried about that. Yeah, right? exactly. And this is going to be saddle stitch, so we don't really have to worry about that. Yep, get those 90s scenes in. Have some fun. Open up InDesign, undust it. It's a, it's a 90s theme, Mohammed, so yeah. Uh, there's a little challenge tab with all the instruction um, on the Behance site, so check it out above the chat. We have 15 minutes roughly to submit your uh, design. There's talks of um, 90s bands, Maybe even like '90s shows, TV shows, anything so that could inspire vibes. Nickelo Nickelodeon. Anything that could inspire your design. Have some fun. We'll review them, and there's a great giveaway. It's a one-year subscription to Creative Cloud, so check it out. Yeah, it's a pretty good prize. Mm -hmm. so I should yeah, be I'm working on a challenge <laughs> submission. So 
once again, kind of going back now that I've, you know, kind of put those initial type thoughts down and angled those and formatted my little summer word list the way that I liked here and kind of taking it and duplicating it. And you can kind of see like this, I don't know, to me this one feels mm -hmm. a lot more dynamic. Yep. Bringing that red in and then taking the size down a little bit so there's less competition with what's happening over here. Cool. Yeah, and then back to the printing question. Um, I think for this, I would definitely print it in CMYK if I could, because there are certain colors that are especially hard to print digitally. And one of those blue. is yeah. this blue. This blue is really hard to replicate, so. Yeah, what is it called? Is it key blue or that printer's hate? They could print it, but yeah. Yeah, they, for some yeah. reason, it's hard for it to dry or something like it that. It is. Yeah, I did a branding project for an architecture firm with that studio, or with that color. Um, and yeah, it was, I mean, it was, it was an offset job, so yeah. it was Pretty fine. Printers are not, yeah, that is a hard. not happy when you pick that color. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the whole color system is mm -hmm. pretty complicated. Yeah. You have Pantones and CMYK and RGB and everything prints different depending on what printer you're using. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's uh, you know it's more expensive to print on Pantones, but um, oh, yeah. one of the cool things about working with a, a production designer uh, that knows printing inside out. Uh, remember, we did this project where he uh, we didn't have a budget for Pantones. But um, he managed to talk to the printers, and they actually tweak each of the CMYK fonts to look more like neon colors. Okay. So we did something crazy with that, and, and, nice. and it turned out amazing. I know that there's also, um, is it an indigo printer now? Have you heard of this? Indigo press or indigo no. printing? It's a... It's digital. It's like a like new blue. digital, yeah. but it produces a more vibrant yeah, yeah. color. I. I haven't really used it yet, but it was something mm -hmm. that we had talked about with a printer in Kansas City. Yeah, or Briso printing is pretty cool. Yeah, too. yeah. It's another option. Very popular on scenes these days. Yeah, definitely. Um, Antonio is asking, are, aren't there moments where you rather work an illustrator and then bring it to InDesign? Um, for me personally, I typically just use Illustrator if it is something vector-based, mm -hmm. um, an icon, or maybe when you're really manipulating the type, yeah. I would use Illustrator, but definitely lean towards InDesign. Yeah, for editorial, type things. if you have a lot of copy, you know, InDesign is great. You have paragraph styles, character styles, um, and it just somehow handles, like, have the information and image, images better on InDesign. Right. But yeah, I agree. Illustrator for illustrating mm -hmm. or doing logos or Speaking a typeface, like outlining it and right. messing around. Yeah, it's a bit. Very, it's really good for that for that stuff. I see Allie's asking if I ever did a police ride along, and no, I have not, Allie. Maybe <laughs> maybe someday. I actually Googled it last night when I was looking at it, and you can do it with an ambulance, firefighters, or police hmm. policemen. So there are some options. Miss um, Mael is asking, how do you add those blue signs of paragraphs? Oh, that's another little nice trick. A, so he's talking about um, mm -hmm. these paragraph signs here. So for that, I just go to type and you select this down here, so that would hide them. Um, sometimes they can be kind mm -hmm. of distracting, sometimes you don't really need them, but 
when you have large type, I think it's nice, especially when you're really manipulating and kind of moving things around, it's nice to know where those breaks are. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes like if I wanted to align something to the left or the right, I would have to have a hard return in between. Otherwise it aligns the whole body, so. Yeah, and it's also nice for, for body copy, like if you're trying to figure out like if something isn't looking right, you might turn that on and realize there's two paragraphs yeah, instead yeah. of one. Yeah, yeah. So yep. you can always check all that for double spacings and stuff like that. So I'm thinking this one is feeling pretty good. So I'm actually just gonna go back and delete this. No. <laughs> Our graveyard of <laughs> design. Kept making decisions early. Yeah. And then over here too, just kind of trying to figure out a different way to call out the date. Um, might throw a little M dash in there. Or maybe this is bold. Yeah, adding typographic details. I think I like that actually. Lori says, rest in peace to that other layout. <laughs> Yeah, this was a day that driving around with the windows down. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite pastimes. Cool. Except now I don't have a car, so. You had a convertible, oh, just the windows then? Just the windows down, okay. yeah. Convertible would have been better. Yeah, it would have. Okay, I'm gonna just go ahead and say no thanks to that. Back to another type heavy spread. Cool. Um, you switched the type to red on this one? Yeah, I switched it to red for now. Um, and someone actually commented yesterday having a column go right through the center like this. Um, and I actually decided that I don't want to do that. So I'm gonna take this down here. And the first one I have like these go through the center, but mm -hmm. that I'm less worried about it going across mm -hmm. this way that whereas having one just like really cut down I the think middle. you can still do that in the in the middle spread. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you wanted to. Because then it, we have a seamless mm -hmm. print across. Yeah, I think once you have your page count and all that, you can figure that out. So something that happened last summer that I'm planning to highlight uh, maybe on its own page or maybe just in the background of this, um, there was the total solar eclipse and Kansas City was actually in the direct path of totality. Mm -hmm. So we got to see the full on. That's awesome. Yeah, it was a huge deal. Um, but yeah, just really, 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 mm -hmm. really Yeah, cool. it was great to see from here as well. Yeah. Did you have like, you know, like a little chip mm -hmm. out of the sun? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, for the, I think we had like, I have it in here somewhere, 27.4 seconds of totality. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So yeah, and then it was crazy because the sky just goes completely dark and this is at like 1 p.m. Mm -hmm. middle of the afternoon. And then in the distance, all the city street lights came on thinking it was nighttime. It's kind of eerie and yeah. cool, spooky. Yeah, so once again, Rachel here is designing. She's originally uh, from uh, Kansas City. Now she's in New York and we are broadcasting from San Francisco where I live. <laughs> so yeah, talking about eclipses. I'm gonna go ahead and start 
start making something. We have uh, four minutes left to the challenge. Uh, the instructions are on the challenge tab above the chat on the Behance. Yeah, let's see your slash live. We'll review them in a little bit. So make sure you get those files ready and send us your links. So these are some more um, random little things that I've decided to, I can maybe highlight. Um, so one was my grandpa said he thought <laughs> watching the eclipse would be similar to watching grass grow. So he wasn't as <laughs> as into the whole <laughs> <That's> thrill. <laughs> yeah. He, he's, the probably whole seen, event. he's probably seen them before too. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, yeah, this was a day. If you've ever had a day where you drink more coffee than water, mm -hmm. I think that was one of those. I think I just did that today. <laughs> yeah, same. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, this was taking my dad through some museum. <laughs> I think he was more interested in where he could sit. Cool. We got two minutes for the challenge. Get your files ready. So I'm thinking since... Zachary is asking a technical question. Uh, he said, I learned that M dashes don't have spaces around them and N dashes do. But since I read opposite instructions, what do you guys stick to? I have uh, an answer that an instructor gave me a while ago, which is uh, there's no rules. I think it's, as long as you treat it the same and throughout your publication or whatever, like if you want to have spaces, always have spaces around the M dashes. If you don't want to have spaces, you just don't have spaces. Yeah. So as long as it's uh, consistent, that's yeah. what one of my instructors told me once. I could see that. Do you have any rules for that? Or? Um, yeah, I think it's kind of what you were saying. It can be, you know, it's pretty subjective. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes it's nice to just go in and add a little, like not a full space, but maybe like mm -hmm. a baby space around an M dash. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's so a visual, visual preference depending on the typeface. If it looks like it's too close to the letters, or you know, you might add a little bit. Or, but I think as long as it's consistent, it should be good. So I'm thinking, since we are talking about the eclipse here, it could be interesting to do some circular type. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Once again, kind of going optical here. Cool. Maybe this goes. Cool. That looks like an eclipse. <laughs> I did a I did a segment here with Adobe um, where I designed um, some packaging oh, yeah. and it was an, an eclipse thing. I was playing around with like the faces of the moon and how it starts to look, you know, yep. bigger and smaller. So this kind of reminds me of that. Let's go. All right, challenge deadline is here. All right. So we're going to review some of the submissions and the winner will get a year subscription to the Creative Cloud. Right on. Looking forward to reviewing our, our submissions. So I'm going to start opening this up.
Okay. I think I have them all open now. Submissions are rolling in. Yeah, looking very nice. So yeah, we're gonna review the submissions now. And Rachel's gonna pick the winner. All right, here we go. Here we go, here's the first one. We got definitely 90s vibe going on. Mm hmm. The Even the photography. Yeah. And yeah, the squiggles. Yeah, very 90s. The photography, the even kind of. Outline shapes. Yeah. Feels very 90s, especially on that like stark white background. Cool. So this feels, uh, this I believe is a spread. So nice job on the spread. Definitely within the rules of the 90s theme. Um, great job. I like the use of color and photography choices is on point. All right, so this one feels a little bit more grungy, I guess. Yeah, we got that grungy type yeah. in there this time. Definitely, uh, photography it? feels 90s. Yeah, it looks like some of that, those rave references yep. in the oh, nice. comments. <laughs> Yeah, photography again, on point. Oh yeah. Those pants are super cool. Yeah, those are like trendy again. So we got that neon copy. Nice, great job, great use of type. I like how you're breaking up the layout. This line here even yeah. it hints a little bit back to like 90s layouts. Yeah. Yeah, great job. Uh, Maybe something you could do too is Bring that angle somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So tie it back to maybe on the home page. It's even just like a little slash line yeah. somewhere, or you know something that just kind of nods to that. Yeah, that shape. Good tie face choices. Definitely hinting to the '90s. So we're jumping to the next one. Nice. Mm, that's cool. This one it feels a little <laughs> bit more Art Deco, but yes. Yeah. I really maybe like not, the layout. Maybe not the right era, but mm -hmm. I agree. I also think the photo is funny. This one? Yeah, a little kid pushing his empty mm -hmm. stroller. Yeah, so yeah, it's, not, it's a nice layout, um, nice typefaces, mm -hmm. and colors are super cool, but yeah, I feel like this feels more Art Deco-ish. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. But it's a nice that layout. That full circle O, mm -hmm. which is nice. Yeah, really nice. So, ooh. ooh, all right, all of them, funky. all of the yeah, 90s yeah. mashup. We got the Mac, we got the funky type. What? <laughs> Game Titanic. Boy. Oh, yeah, this looks like a magazine I would buy <laughs> at like my book fair. Yeah, definitely. Elementary school. Definitely picking some good references, some postmodern uh, furniture. Some neon. <laughs> yeah, some neon, neon feels pretty 90s. Cool. Nice job. Game Boy. Use that one a lot. Ooh, all right. Ooh. This is that grunge. Yeah, that's that is more, was, this is more grunge. I was thinking about. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Nice uh, use of photography. Yeah, definitely in the 90s, they were playing around with like crazy layouts like this. Yeah, lots of layers. Yeah. Lots of layers, lots of funky type colors. Definitely hinting on the 90s, so great job. Yeah, yeah. Staying on target. All right. Small. So, <laughs> so this is a nice layout. I like the use of the big type for the title at an angle. Let's see, we have a little spread here. Some of that, that condensed serif kind of reminds me Nirvana. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bit. yeah, yeah. One of those album covers. Yeah, maybe she was a fan of Nirvana back in the <laughs> day. <laughs> she looks like she might be. Yeah. So yeah, I, get, I like the use of the big type here. It could also be nice if you could have bring it over here as well to kind of tie in yeah. the cover with yeah. the spread. But yeah, nice, nice use of space. I guess maybe that is the angle. Would you say that was a 90s thing? Probably, kind yeah. Kind of. Yeah, yeah, they were definitely not sticking to the rules back yeah. then. Yeah, the yeah. I feel like. What do you think? Oh, there's one more spread. Okay. Okay. So. This one feels pretty '90s mm -hmm. too. I like the shapes and the colors, definitely. Okay. There's one more. 
Definitely 90s. Okay, we've got one more, it looks like. Six one more. Three. Uh, what does that mean? So, Fanny. Fanny? Okay. Yeah. Uh. All right. One more. Awesome. Ooh. Cool. This is kind of a more abstract take on the 90s. I like yeah. how it hints to the 90s, but it's kind of just cropped in this funky shape. Yeah, very obscure shape right there in the middle. Mm -hmm. Where the... Sorry. Uh, that type on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Kind of reminds me of Friends. Mm -hmm. Looks like... Cool. So yeah, this feels like an editorial cover with like maybe some stories from the inside. Um, nice title yeah. on the cover. I like this spread on yeah. this page. Yeah. Oh, I guess she's adding some of that, some of those Mexican bands from the 90s. Cool. <laughs> Good job. I like the uh, rough pen tool yeah. cut out. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I feel like that's kind of in right now mm -hmm. again. It's 90 trends resurfacing. Yes, yeah, so I believe this was a spread. It looks like it was split in the middle. That's nice use of color, very 90s. Um, 90s bands. Awesome. Ooh, we got a back cover. Oh, it's a nice little detail on the back. Yeah, great job on this. Um, so now we will pick a winner. Yeah. What do uh, what do our viewers think? Yeah, do you guys do you... have any any input okay. on these? Which ones are we feeling? So should we just go over them one yeah, more let's time? Kind of scroll back through. So here's a little bit of that say by the bell vibe. More grungy. Yeah, it's kind of like refined grungy, maybe. This one felt a little bit more art deco, but yeah. it's it's nice design. And this one is an explosion of 90s <laughs> yeah. icons, furniture. Yeah, I'm actually kind of digging just the total <laughs> like mashup. Yeah, that, that's it's a very 90s. Maximal yeah. stick. I'm saying that right. Cool. Oh, was there one more? Or is that it? I think there's more. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, this kind of skater. Grungy. Yeah, lots of texture. I wonder, do you think, do you think the uh, distorted type was a typeface like that? Or is that something that... I think that people started doing it at first and, and, and like just messing up with the type and uh -huh. then a bunch of fonts came yeah, out that yeah. way later on. Um, I believe that's it, right? So, should we go over, um, do you have yeah. a favorite? So maybe we narrow down to a couple and then yeah. you guys can help us pick. Let's see. Which one? Um, okay, so. Ti the Titanic one is true to the 90s. <laughs> it's this one. Yeah, I like yeah. that one. Um, so there's that one, and then what was the... So we have um, the yes. grungy one, the 90s. I liked the uh, skatery grungy. I like this one, too. The skatery this one's grungy. Nice. This one, that uh, the cover, I think, has a little skater on it. Mm -hmm. kind of liked that. Um, oh. What do I think? We're getting a lot of Titanics. People liking the Titanic one, which I agree. Yeah, that Titanic one. is getting some boats. Um, you want to pick one? I vote Berlin. I vote Berlin. Which one's Berlin? Oh, this that one. That was our little Art Deco one. Mm -hmm. It's it's a nice design. It is, yeah. It just it feels like it's not on the yeah. theme. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I'm thinking I'm gonna go with the viewers here and vote the Titanic, Titanic. crazy mashup right. catalog looking. So Rachel's pick Titanic as the winner. Congratulations, you get a year subscription of uh, the Creative Cloud. Ooh. That is great. And we'll have the name in a second. Votes are coming in. So we're coming in. 
We're trying to yeah, find. We're, we're we're figuring out which who submitted this Titanic. Claire Cross. So Claire is the winner. Congrats, Claire. Congrats. Good job. Free Adobe for a year. Yep. What's up? All right. So yeah, again, we have a full schedule coming up um, with uh, more editorial design. And yeah, make sure you check it out. Uh, right now we have Rachel Rupp, who is designing a scene. Um, and then at 11 Pacific time, we have Stephanie, hosted by Kathleen. And then at one, we have Lucas. They're all creating scenes, I believe. I uh, think so, yeah. Editorial, um, this is editorial week. So yeah, if you like grids, if you like typography, Make sure you stay tuned and you're going to learn some great stuff and see people just having fun and being creative. Yes. So awesome schedule ahead and it'll be going till Thursday. So every day, same, same hours. Um, there's a challenge going on on every segment. So if you still want to win a subscription to Creative Cloud, make sure you stay tuned on the next segment and submit your uh, challenge. Yes. I think tomorrow we're also looking at a port couple portfolios. Oh yeah, tomorrow yeah. we'll be looking at portfolios instead of a challenge. So we'll be reviewing a portfolio. So for a chance just to get your portfolio reviewed, just make sure you submit it and um, there will be instructions on the chat. So check it out tomorrow. Yeah. There will be portfolio review on all the segments. Today we still have challenges and giveaways for the rest of the segment, so stay tuned. Yes. All right, so jumping back into our little typographic microzine, as some have been calling it. Um, I'm just gonna kind of flip through here to review what we have. Uh, once again, we're just working with a lot of content and a lot of just type and mm -hmm. grids and all that. Yeah, so she picked three typefaces. She's playing around with those throughout the scene. Um, she has four colors. Um, it's somewhat of a calendar of writings that she made over the course of a year. And now she's turning it into a scene. A little pocket journal, tiny micro scene. Four by six yep. inches. Yep. And 20 pages now instead of 16 because underestimated that a little bit. So we have uh, variations on layouts and seasons and we'll still be playing around and watching yeah. Rachel be creative. We have one and a half seasons to go. <laughs> yep. Getting, getting there. Yep, so we still have uh, the rest of today um, and then we'll have tomorrow so stay tuned to see how this scene wraps up and um, yeah, hopefully get created at some point or printed. Yes, yeah, definitely. Cool. Okay, so I'm kind of going back. Somebody's Maybe. saying the double negative black cover is pure evil and I like it. <laughs> cool. Is that... This one? I the think so. Here? I guess it's like a. Yeah, it's kind it of feels like, a, like it's like the cover reverse a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little bit of an optical illusion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe maybe when you switch around like the pages, you see the yeah. transition. Or it makes it look evil, I guess. That's cool. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down with an evil spread. Yeah, Claire, congrats. Adobe is sending you a message. So I am going to go ahead and mess with a page number or something like it. Psst, I did it. Muhammad says, Rachel's so great. <laughs> wow, thank you, Muhammad. I actually quit and reopened InDesign to check if her name was there. Uh -uh. <laughs> Not sure I understand that. <laughs> so what I'm doing here is um, 
So I made all of my margins 0.25 and then left 0.5 in the middle for some page numbers. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I picked that number because it was double what this is. So then that allows me to just center align these page numbers and have it optically match the mm -hmm. margins that we're working with. Um, so I'm going to type in what our Or working title, if you will. And I'm not really loving how far past the five that line mm -hmm. goes. Do you know if there's a way to edit that? I'm not, I'm not sure, sure if you can edit the distance, but so I can go in here and I can see, it, yeah, I can change how offset it is or the weight but I'm not sure if there's a way to control that. If anyone out there knows of any tricks, you should yeah. let us know. Um, but what I might just have to do is go manual mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. make the line myself. You can always just add that to your master page. Yeah. And just manually. You can even the place the line in the text box. Oh, yeah. Which keeps it even more, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, thank you everyone for joining the chat. Lots of fun comments. Um, yeah, so stay tuned. Continue participating. We love comments. If you have suggestions, anything you want to add to this, feel free. Yeah, give us some feedback. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody's saying use paragraph rules instead. Caitlin says, looking great, Rachel. Ooh. <laughs> hey, Caitlin. She's hosting the next uh, segment. Some behind the scenes yep. shout outs. And then I'm going to do a little shift tab. Zachary says, yeah, bottom stroke on text frame. Yeah, so I guess that's what she did, right? OK, yeah, yeah. Lots of key commands. Option command J for rules above or below. All right, so if anyone doesn't know the... Uh, Paragraph rules goes as far as the length of the text box, says Min Bill. Okay, I'll try that mm -hmm. maybe tomorrow. Yep, um, experiment with that. So I just did the old page number mm -hmm. trick here, which is Insert a very character. yes, a very handy tool if you yep. are not aware of it. If you don't want to type in every page yeah. number, <laughs> yes, it, there's a tool for that. It's very nice. So what I've done is just, you know, I have my character that is still going off this text box here, and you just put your cursor right here, and then do type, insert special character, markers, and then mm -hmm. do the current page number. And you can format it or add a paragraph or character style to it, mm -hmm. and, and, and it'll always maintain that and just automatically add the page number. And you added this to the master page, right? Yes, yes. So this will automatically be applied, hopefully, to all, the pages to all of the pages. Using that master. Yeah. So in some instances, I might not want the page numbers. Mm -hmm. and I'll probably go back and take those off of some of the spreads. You can always create a, a blank master if you don't yes. want the page numbers there, or yeah. a different master if you want to have the page numbers slightly different. So for example, on this spread, even though it's experimental, I'm not, I'm not really digging mm -hmm. Where it's, where it's landing. Yep. So um, one way is to apply the blank master, mm -hmm. as you said. Um, but I kind of want to keep my grids in place. So I'm just going to command shift. And then you can select Edit the master. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that off of this page. 
Yeah, that's that's another one of those rules that you can always break. You don't need to have page numbers on every yeah. page. As long as you know you're flipping through the book, you should know that the page before is you know yeah, yeah. a certain I think, number. Yeah. yeah, people can figure it out. Um, one thing that is kind of finicky with the page numbers on masters is anytime you have color a col yeah a bleed of color. Um, <coughs> what the master is going to do is it's always going to place that page number at the bottom, mm -hmm. the bottom layer of the spread. So it's That's a little another annoying. also useful um, thing where you can do it in layers. So you can pay, put your page numbers on a layer above everything. Oh. So it always be up on top. That is that is smart. I'm going to do that tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. We're running out of time today, but yeah. I'm going to do that tomorrow because. Because then it's nice. Because once you, once you take the text box mm -hmm. off of the master, then if you edit anything in master, it won't apply any longer. Yeah, and you can also you could also create a different master and make it maybe make it white instead of black. True. Or you can play around with masters with that uh, with that stuff. All the tricks. Mm -hmm. um, so something else that I actually recently learned is the numbering and section options here. Um, so I think for this, I might play with a different mm -hmm. number style. Um, and there's something kind of graphically nice about Roman yeah. numerals. So I think we're gonna go go that round. Nice. This. Especially since we have our numbers down here that you know are kind of representing our title. It's kind of nice to have that mm -hmm. offset there. Cool. And then you can kind of see here how using that extra margin space kind of provides a nice relationship mm -hmm. between where this is falling yeah. and the other margins. So. Cool. Yeah, there's tons of technical things you can do, like automated stuff that uh, InDesign does really well. Also, like. You know, I've also done like a table of contents where it automatically pulls the titles from like Ooh. a specific like paragraph style. So yeah, there's tons of tricks that are super technical and um, they're fun to use here and there. Yeah. Yeah, once you kind of learn how to cheat the system in those little ways, mm -hmm. it's nice. Yeah, especially when it automates stuff for you. <laughs> yes. And we, when you have like large publications. Oh yeah, or, especially if you're working with like a 200 page mm -hmm. book. Or if it's a like, continuous, you know, publication that happens every month. Yeah. If you have everything set up, then for it sure. saves a lot of time. But we are in the experimenting phase and maybe we won't have time to make those decisions yet. Right. So yeah, this is our cluttered summer spread that we're working with. Mm -hmm. And uh, for those who missed it, last summer there was the solar eclipse, which was kind of a big deal. So I'm choosing to highlight that on this spread. And I think for this layout with all the type, I might just keep it really clean and simple mm -hmm. like this. Yeah. You just have the four columns on either side just to provide a little yeah. structure and stability for some of these other All right. spreads. Thank you guys for joining us. Thanks yes, thank to you. everybody on the chat. Uh, really funny stuff and interesting <laughs> comments. Uh, continue chatting, continue participating on the challenges. We'll be here tomorrow again, yeah. 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. The finale. Yeah, the finale. We'll finish this scene, finish. or Rachel will. Um, and stay tuned for the next uh, segments with more editorial design coming up today. So thank you guys for joining. Bye. Bye. <laughs>